And right here we have our City of Mesa compost bin. And I've wrapped plastic around it to keep the humidity in there. And, uh, you know, I try to compost everything I can in here. You know, I've got some branches from the fig tree, some all the leaves from the fig tree, all my used dirt and everything I throw in there. Sorry about the mess, guys. It's busy time of the year. So down here, this guy, right there, that is a sweet lemon tree that I grew from a seed. So lemons being uh, not true to type, who knows what it's going to be. But uh, sweet lemons are kind of cool. They have a weird citrusy taste, and there's absolutely no bitterness to them. So in here we got uh, some mint. This stuff's been growing for years. I don't even take care of it. I just let it do its thing. Got some uh, spider plants. Yes, spider plants grow great here. Just give them water. They take off. We got a non-edible hibiscus growing in here. Some sort of fern thingy growing. Up here we got a, a huge blue java. I've had this guy in the ground now about six years. I've taken multiple, multiple pups off of it. Planted them around the yard, gave them away to friends and family. And we're starting to get a small leaf out of the top. So we should get... Uh, a rack of bananas probably uh, early spring and then uh, maybe by the end of the summer if the wind doesn't blow it over we'll have some bananas to eat and again that's a, a blue java uh, they call it ice cream banana and uh, let's go over here underneath all this plastic here we got our our fig tree cuttings from the front fig tree from the other videos these guys are just chilling out in the, the humidity and plastic shades them out we got a, uh, another Moringa tree over here. I planted him here, same time as the one on the front. I think about a year and a half ago, I planted him here to shade out this banana so he doesn't uh, get too sunburned in the summer because it gets pretty hot over here. All right, over here we got uh, this one here. This is a, uh, a wild mulberry. I got this one here, all right? And then I also got this one here for 10 bucks each they popped up in some guy's garden and said hey 20 bucks come pick them up so i did you know and then i got some uh shangri-las here one little leaf at the tip then i got another one over here these guys are for sale 100 bucks each so when it comes to these bananas guys i'm gonna jump back over to here if you can do not trim the leaves off because these guys are going to, the dead leaves, they're going to shade the trunk in the summer because once these trunks overheat, it's, it's not good for the banana. They just start suffering. So try to leave these on there. Again, heavily mulched, composted in place. Over here we have a uh, transplant papaya tree. These are seed grown. I'm going to show you a big patch in the back that I got, but, uh, this guy was transplanted from the back, so he's a little short, a little stunted. But I planted this here again to, to help shade the banana. They're great for shade papayas. They do really good here. Uh, over here we got a uh, split leaf philodendron. We also have a uh, another pineapple. This one here is supposedly, I traded a Shangri-La for this guy. And supposedly, here, take a look at the leaves. This is supposedly a... Uh, dwarf ever bearing mulberry but to me it just looks like a regular morris alba so i don't know i'll find out and see if it gets gigantic next year or if it stays bushy and gives us a little fruit uh over here we got these are uh figs from last year off the the fig tree in the front that we trimmed up in the other videos and then i got uh i think this one here is a brown turkey right here and then uh got some more down there some brunswick some brown turkey, some white Italian, um, and then we got two black Madeiras. These are tissue cultures. I got these from a guy on eBay. Awesome guy. He uh, supposedly bred the fig, fig mosaic virus out of the uh, black Madeira, and he was selling them, so I bought two of them. I'm going to plant those over there where the, uh, the big fig cuttings are down there. <laughs> we got a, uh, another papaya tree here. This is, again, planted for shade, not really fruit, but it's Shading out my Manzano, which got snapped in half, and the windstorm last summer. Thing was doing great. It was 
probably about 15, 18 feet tall. And now it's just a little nub, but it's got some pups. So there's a pup there, there's a pup, bigger pup here. Another one somewhere in the back here. I don't know if you could see it, but it's back there. That one's only a couple inches tall. And then uh, right here, so these guys are really cool. These are ficus banglensis, Indian uh, banyan tree, national tree of India. And uh, they are the, they hold the record for the largest tree in the world in area, in uh, terms of how much area the tree could cover. So these guys can cover acres. One tree could look like a forest of trees because they get aerial roots that drop down from the branches down into the soil and root the plant. So these came from uh, the banyan tree in Old Town Scottsdale. And uh, they're about a year old. I think I started these last December. Um, I'm going to do a whole video on banyan trees. They're really cool trees. They grow great here. And if you got a lot of room, it's definitely a tree you want to grow. You know, great shade tree. It, it does. It's a fig, so it does put out little figs. But I call them monkey figs. They're not really edible. I guess if you're a monkey, you know, you might want to eat them. But people-wise, yeah, no, you wouldn't want to eat them. Over here we got uh, this is a navel orange tree. Kind of young. We get fruit on it every year. Tons of fruit, and it keeps dropping them. I think it doesn't doesn't get much sun because you know it only has this little sliver up here between the roof and the neighbor's tree. And then uh, inside, I got dragon fruit planted in here. There you go. It's kind of climbing up the tree don't know if it's going to grow very good because uh it's just not getting enough sun you know here we go here this is a uh, a pup from our blue java this is planted uh beginning of last spring so it's almost been in the ground a year doing pretty good over here this guy is a contorted mulberry He's been in the ground about a year. He's quadrupled in size, but they're really cool to get these twisted neural branches, you know, and uh, supposedly this is a female, but last year I got nothing but male flowers. So let's see, it could be a hermaphrodite. It could just be a male. I, I sure hope not. Um, over here we got a, this is another pineapple. Oh, let's get the leaf off there so you can see it a little better. Yeah, there's another pineapples. This is about a year and a half old from a store bought top from Walmart. Um, over here we have a dwarf Brazilian banana. That guy is a pretty sure it was a tissue culture banana. Uh, probably about three feet tall by now to the tip of the leaves. And uh, he's doing pretty good. Over here, this is a, uh, a Buddha's hand citron. I'm gonna hopefully get him in the ground. We got a whole bunch of. Uh, oh, watch out! The cat's coming over here. All right, get out of here, cat. These guys here, these are uh, baobab trees. Baobab, I think, is digitata. So digitata means digits in Latin, fingers. So apparently, the leaves on this one are gonna look like fingers. But yeah, I got quite a few of those. Uh, got a desert rose. This is another one I rescued from Lowe's. The other day wife always wanted one and i'm not gonna pay 30 bucks for a plant so i get this one for i think like 10 or 12 bucks got a whole bunch of mexican petunias in here these guys here this is a eucalyptus came up in the yard i don't kill anything i try to save stuff pot it up who knows someone may want it i think this is a an ash tree i'm gonna do a little bonsai with the roots that was another one that popped up in the yard kind of cool Got a plumeria right here. Another one. This is another one I rescued from Lowe's. I think I paid like eight bucks for it. Been in the ground now about a year. Grown great. Over here we got a uh, Madagascar palm. Another one I rescued. This is one uh, about eight years ago. Rescued it. and It flowered all summer for the first time. It, it split at the top. These guys do great here. Don't know about uh, full sun. You know, he gets sun. You know, as you can see here, again, right through this little sliver sky. So probably a couple hours a day in the summer. Um, in the winter, you know, this guy here, this is a, a white mulberry. He loses his leaves. This is another one I, I got for free. Some guy wanted it gone. Came over, dug it up with my daughter, and 
planted it here and it's uh it went from about three feet tall beginning of last summer to uh i don't know probably about 12 feet right now very 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 big grows great i got a lot of air layers off that a lot of cuttings so if you're looking for a morris alba that fruits you know for either the fruit or if you want to make tea out of the leaves i'll have those for sale this this spring uh got a couple of dragon fruits here so this big one here is a purple flesh dragon fruit and then i have down here these guys were from seed so this was a store-bought dragon fruit that i grew the seeds and i don't recommend doing it from seed they take forever you could do a cutting and have something the size of a christmas tree in uh, six months if you do it from seed these guys are almost a year old now and they're still teeny tiny but still kind of cool that i grow them we got a uh, Let's see, over here we got uh, some of our fig cuttings. Try to get the, the shadow gone here. So, you know, these are some of the fig cuttings from that tree we did in the other two videos. These are just in perlite, sealed up in the shade. They get a little bit of sun in the morning, just a little bit of dappled sun, and they're doing great. I water them uh, with the, the hose end sprayer. Kind of miss them just to keep them moist once, once or twice a day whenever I get a chance. And... Uh, they're doing pretty good. They should leaf out and root out pretty quick over here. So this one here, this is a uh, air layer off of that white mulberry behind us that I just showed you. I have uh, these two here are uh, weeping mulberries. That's from my tree in the front. I had ants crawling into the, uh, the rooting pods, so I, I cut them off because the ants were just decimating the, the new roots as they were forming and so I had to wrap them with some parafilm to put them in here. I think they'll make it. I think we'll do pretty good. Right here, we got a, uh, this one here. This is a uh, Anna apple tree. Air layer off of my Anna apple tree in the back, which I'll show you in a minute. And uh, this is going to go to my daughter's house. She always wanted an apple tree, so I grew an apple tree. And uh, super excited about that. Here's a uh, air layered contorted. So this is... From that contorted mulberry behind us you can see it's rooted out it's starting to get leaves on it and get this out of here and this cat to stop bothering me <laughs> so oops, get out of here cat so yeah that guy's rooted out this is uh i don't remember i think this might be a, a pakistani or maybe a weeping i don't remember it looks more like a pakistani to me a lot of these guys in the back here are all Pakistanis. I think I got four right here. Oh, five. Yeah, here's another one. This one, this one was doing great. I missed one day of watering, and look what happened. I cut, I had to cut about three feet off of it, and you could see where it went from green bark to dead bark. But it's it's still going. It's still pretty good. I'm still happy with it. Uh, this is another dragon fruit here. We got a uh, purple flesh, white flesh, and yellow flesh in here. Made a little arbor, copied it off the internet. Still haven't finished it, but it's growing up. It's doing pretty good. I don't know what's going on there. Probably had little water drops that acted like a magnifying glass and burnt it a little bit, but whatever. These things grow like weeds. So here's some palm trees. You know, like I said before, I uh, get a lot of donor palms popping up because of my big palm tree in the front. So you know, this, is, this is about six months or so. Let them go in the ground for six months, pot them up, let them go in the pot for six months, or whatever people buy them. Here's the, uh, here's a stalk right here off of that Manzano. This guy blew off last summer, and as you can see, it's still actually pretty, pretty solid. It's been sitting here for, geez, it's got to be four months now. So, just goes to show you, bananas don't need that much water. But, here's another view of that, uh, white mulberry, horse alba. All right, pretty big. Over here, we got uh, sugar cane. I do a lot of cuttings off my sugar cane. I'm going to do a video on that. They're they're super easy to grow, really great. They, uh, they have a bamboo look to them. They grow great here. They're just a giant grass. The biggest problem with them is uh, aphids. Just like the uh, scale insect, aphids will, or ants will farm aphids, and they'll put them on there, and they'll suck the sap out, so... You can just spray it with uh, some sort of insecticide or get some sort of predators and put it on there to get rid of them. But mainly under the leaves, 
I just go underneath the leaves. You'll see them. Not hard to miss. And you can blast them with the hose, scrape them off, whatever you want to do. But they grow great here. You know, it's a green sugar cane, so you could uh, juice them. You could eat it. You know, whatever you want to do with sugar cane. Grow more, give it away to your friends. I'll show you over here. We got a, there's a bin of sugar cane cuttings. This I just fertilized the other day. It's just growing in straight perlite. And these guys are probably like three, four months old. So in the spring, I'm going to get these guys potted up, get them ready for sale. So back to here, we got a uh, Australian green mulberry. It's starting to lose its leaves. It was green up until last week. Don't know why, but yeah, I just decided I'm going to start losing my leaves. These guys have a weeping tendency too, to the way they grow. You can see it's not very upright like that white one over there. This one's kind of lanky and weepy, but still pretty cool. They put out a long white berry, kind of like a white Pakistan. Uh, it goes by a couple of different names, Australian Green, Green Mulberry, King White, King White Chatoot, which is King White. Chatoot is King White in Arabic, I think, so it's a King White, King White. Anyway, yeah, we got some, uh, these vines here are, uh, they just popped up by themselves. I, I composted in place here. As you can see, there's, you know, there's some eggshells in there, and uh, these guys are butternut squash, so... Yeah, I've eaten a couple of them. They're actually pretty good. But uh, back to this mulberry here. So this guy, uh, I purchased this from my buddy Alan over at Queen Creek Tropicals in Queen Creek. Great guy. If you're in the area and uh, I'm too far or I don't have something you want, I definitely recommend him. He's super, super cool guy. But uh, I always bring him plants and we trade and, you know, just a, can't say enough about the guys. Totally stand up. Awesome guy. But uh, so this was a... Uh, grafted tree he grafted it from uh his onto a uh i think it was an ever ever bearing root stock and i don't really like grafted trees so if you have a uh, a fig or a mulberry that's grafted you could actually plant the graft below the soil level and the top part will root out and then you won't have a grafted tree anymore so this guy let me show you over here i planted him well below where the graft is so the graft is at least another seven, eight inches down from, from here. So it's rooted out. It's on its own roots now, which is really cool. All right, let's see what else we got. All right, now here we got some, some white striped agaves. I got some uh, totem cactuses, some Mexican fence post cactuses. Um, Let's see here. We got some pine cone cacti. These are all uh, Haas avocados. Whenever we do avocados, I always save the seeds and grow them. You know, I don't like, like, like I said before, I don't like throwing anything away. You know, people want them, you know, sell them dirt cheap. You know, sometimes I'll give them away. You know, people want to try their hand at growing an avocado. And I totally recommend seed grown. I don't like grafted or anything like that. Seed grown is the best. You know, here's a, whole bunch of lychees these guys uh again from the mekong market ate the lychees grew the seeds these were jackfruits these dead stalks here they uh i think grubs got to them i've unpotted a couple of them found some grubs in there in the meantime i put down some predatory nematodes so hopefully that'll take care of my grub problem uh here we go here these are uh there's another avocado we got two in one in the ground and one right next to it in a pot. But these are a bunch of rare avocados. We got some rednecks in there, uh, some avocillas, all sorts of crazy ones, you know, and these guys grow great. And as you can see, they're starting to get bark on the stem. So it seems they, uh, they get bark on their stem in the wintertime. Here's another one. So this one's in a pot here. Again, it's in a grow bag that I made. This one's probably about a, a foot shorter, but it looks taller because it's in a pot that's about a foot tall. But I've inosculated the trunks together. So you can see I tied these and they put out more on the sides. But what my plan was was to inosculate these so 
all these individual plants will turn into one tree. They'll share nutrients and they'll just do a lot better. I did this one too. So he's an osculator right there also. It's a, a bonsai technique. Uh, I'll, I'll do a video about growing these guys because a lot of people have a lot of questions about av avocados. There's a lot of misinformation out there and a lot of you can't do this, you have to do that. And it's, I don't believe any of it, you know. I've grown a lot of avocados and they all do pretty good here. So we got a bunch of Shangri-Las back here. To try to get you guys out of the sun. <sighs> Sorry about the shaky video, guys. So yeah, these are some more Shangri-Las. Again, they're in grow bags. Oh, this be a good shot of the top of the avocados here. So these guys are growing great. They grow great in the spring and the fall, summer. You got to cover them. They will burn back. But uh, I got a trick for that, too. I'll do a video on that, how to make uh, sunscreen for your plants. I found the video online. I did it, and it worked great. 